Hello guy, NerdKing101 here, and with the recent success of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, I figured I wanted to do a video outlining the origin of the creation of the character of Miles Morales, because it's actually really complicated to fully understand the full scope of why Miles Morales was created and how it all happened, unless you're a hardcore comic fan that understands a lot of the concepts. But to do that, we need to go back in time. Far back to the year of 1938. With the creation of the world's first superhero. In the year 1938, Superman was created by Jerry Siegel and artist Joe Stutcher. And after the rights were eventually picked up, he had his first official appearance in Action Comics number one. One year later, in 1939, in the first issue of Detective Comics number one, the second superhero to ever be created made his appearance in the form of the Batman. Both belonging to the same company, Batman and Superman would eventually meet, and with their meeting, the DC Universe was born. Over the years, the DC Universe will continue to grow, with the addition of new colorful characters like Alan Scott, the Green Lantern, Jay Garrick, the Flash, and of course, Wonder Woman. However, eventually, DC Comics decided to move on from characters like Alan Scott, the first Green Lantern, or Jay Garrick, the Flash, whose powers were mostly magical-based, as times were changing and readers were more interested in science fiction. Hence the creation of the Flash most people know today from the TV series Barry Allen. It was eventually established that Barry Allen and his adventures along with Superman and Batman that he interacted with took place on a different Earth from the adventures of Jay Garrick. You see, Jay Garrick, Alan Scott, and their versions of Superman and Batman, their adventure took place on what is known as Earth 2. The reason Barry Allen took the name Flash was that there were people in his universe who were the same people that wrote the comics in the real world and that were able to see into Earth 2 reality in their dreams because their brains vibrated at the same frequency as Earth 2 reality. Because of this, it would chronicle the adventures of these heroes on Earth 2 in the form of comic books, one of them being the stories of Jay Garrick the Flash, and that is where Barry Allen would get the name The Flash. This concept of two Earths gave birth to the idea of the comic book multiverse. The best way I could describe it is to, to ask you to picture a bag of marbles. Each individual marble is its own Earth, its own universe, while the bag containing them is known as the multiverse. And DC ran with this idea until around 1985. However, then they ran into a problem. The characters were not easily accessible. If you wanted to start reading Batman from the very beginning, you had to go back and read books from 1939. It is currently 1985. That is a huge task that not many people can do, especially because at this time, prior to the internet, you would have to buy the issues and trade individually in a physical form. You couldn't just go on something like Comicsology, a website that allows you to read comics for a monthly subscription, and just read whatever you wanted without actually owning a physical copy. So it was a very difficult task to complete. It was then editorial over at DC Comics had an idea to have a universe or multiverse-wide event known as Crisis on Infinite Earth. This event is one of the most convoluted stories in probably DC's entire history that I'm not going to go into the details of exactly. However, the event was designed to act as what is known as a reboot for the entire universe to basically do some house cleaning and help restart the character. A reboot is basically when the writers go, okay, this happened, this didn't happen, and these characters are now this age, because prior to this, they were aging normally. But Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman, they were getting too old. So in the form of the Crisis on Infinite Earths, when the storyline ended, 
the universe was rebooted and everybody went back to a new easy to pick up starting point. However, you may be wondering what this has to do with Miles Morales. Well, Marvel Comics, the competitor, did not want to reboot. Marvel Comics has actually never done a full reboot. They've done a few soft reboots, but they've never done a complete reboot where everything starts over. At this point in time, Spider-Man had entered his early to mid-20s and had even married Mary Jane Watson. And Marvel wanted to return Spider-Man to his roots as a down-on-his-luck teenager with girl problems in high school trying to pass the courses get girls, and be the superhero known as Spider-Man. So, on December 1998, they released the book known as Spider-Man Chapter 1, which returned the character to its origins as a teenager, starting with an all-new story for Peter Parker that everyone hated with a burning passion. The reaction was horrible. Marvel immediately backtracked on the decision, referring to it as a one-off story that didn't actually matter and take place in mainline continuity, and then continued the story from before with an older, more mature, married Peter Parker. However, they still wanted to create a new, teenage, modern version of Spider-Man that was struggling with girl problems and high school classes and balancing high school and being a superhero. They still wanted to go back to that, so they had an idea. Why not create a separate publishing line just for this version of the character, but they also decided to take it up another level. They decided to create new modern versions of not just Spider-Man in this story, but also to try it with the X-Men. And if this new publishing line of modern versions of these characters that are easy to pick up because the stories are just starting right now succeeded, they would do it for the Avengers, and for Iron Man, and for Hulk, and for all of these characters in the Fantastic Four. This publishing line was called the Ultimate Publishing Line, and the universe these stories took place in was referred to as the Ultimate Universe. It was established originally, even though this would be changed later on, that the Ultimate Universe would be completely separate from the main Marvel Universe and have absolutely no contact with it. Obviously, as I said earlier, this does change later on and they do end up interacting. However, that did not happen for a good number of years into the existence of the Ultimate Universe. They tapped Spider-Man writer Brian Michael Bendis one of the biggest names currently in the comic book industry with writing this new version of Spider-Man and she writes Ultimate Spider-Man from its inception to its end over a decade later. After writing the story of Peter Parker of Spider-Man for a number of years, Brian Michael Bendis had an idea. He was going to kill off the Spider-Man of the Ultimate Universe. However, Ultimate Spider-Man, as the books were titled, was easily the best-selling book of the Ultimate line, and probably the most well-received, as a lot of the other Ultimate books are looked back on nowadays with much criticism from the comic book community. So clearly, Editorial and everybody above Brian Michael Bendick were not just going to let him end the line of Ultimate Spider-Man comics, so Miles Morales was created. After the storyline titled The Death of Spider-Man in what is considered by most to be the best and most well-handled and emotional death in an industry where death means nothing, Miles Morales was introduced as the new main character of the Ultimate Spider-Man line of stories. We were introduced to his main supporting cast, and we were showed the aftermath of the death of Spider-Man. You see, Ultimate Spider-Man died in a battle right outside his Aunt May's house at the age of 15, only having been Spider-Man for one year. Miles Morales, who had already been bitten by a radioactive spider, was too afraid to step into the battle and was watching from the sideline with the rest of the civilians as Spider-Man battled his enemy to the death. Spider-Man was a great hero to the city of New York, so after his death, and especially after it came out that he was a kind 15-year-old boy from Queens, the city of New York held a massive government-paid funeral for the young hero that Miles Morales attended. 
At the funeral, he was able to engage in conversation with Mary Jane Watson, where he asked her why Peter did it, in which she replied with Ben Parker's famous word. She believed his uncle's word. With great power comes great responsibility. Thanks to Mary Jane's word, Peter Parker effectively became Miles Morales' Uncle Ben, and Miles Morales would go on to become the Spider-Man of the Ultimate Universe. Eventually, through crazy comic book shenanigans, the Ultimate Universe would be destroyed, and Miles Morales would be brought into the main Marvel timeline continuity, Earth 616, where the original story of Spider-Man that everybody has been reading since its creation takes place. It all goes back to the fact that unlike DC Comics, who will reboot their universe every couple of years in order to make room for new readers to hop on with things like Crisis on Infinite Earth. Marvel is not willing to do so, meaning that they are always trying to find new creative ways to bring in new readers, and this is the story of how Miles Morales was created. However, nobody ever really knew what to do with Miles Morales. Nobody ever really knew what to do with him, especially after he was brought into the main Marvel timeline where there was already a Spider-Man. Not just the fact that there was already a Spider-Man, but a Spider-Man who had been Spider-Man since he was 15 and was now in his mid to late 20s. This Spider-Man, Peter Parker, was incredibly experienced. This Spider-Man had battled against Thanos in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. He had fought in the Superhuman Civil War. He had been brought to Battle World to engage in the event known as the Secret Wars. He had been an Avenger, a member of the Fantastic Four and the Future Foundation. He had fought alongside Power Pack, Deadpool, the X-Men. He had done it all. So why would you need a 15 year old kid version of Spider-Man that had no idea what he was doing? So it wasn't until Spider-Verse was released that we really got to see a writer besides Brian Michael Bendis sit down and do something with the character, which is why many fans of the idea of Bob Morales like myself and just fans of the comics overall are very happy and looking forward to seeing this new direction for the character integrated into the comic and taken in new interesting directions. But yeah, Mob Morales is an incredibly fascinating character with a very fascinating origin that takes back decades. So guys, I hope you found the video interesting and enjoyed the information on the world of comics. If you did, leave it a like. If you would like more stuff like this, tell me in the comment section down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day.